you're wondering what's happening to your radio. It's developing a satiric point of view, zapping Japanese takeover giants, yuppie food, the BBC, and United States history. A sure sign you've crossed over into another dimension, the Freeburg Zone. Stan, Stan, wake up. Where am I? That lead-in sounded like what's-his-name, but the second voice sounded like Ray Bradbury. I am Ray Bradbury, Stan. Don't you know me? Ray! Ray, I was just resting my eyes for a minute. Never close your eyes at the microphone. Really? You could have a, a bad accident that way. Like what? Well, another show could drive into you. Uh -huh. Also, you could get your science fiction wires crossed. Bad karma. You're actually on the Ray Bradbury Theater. I am? Freeberg doesn't know what to think. He's just been told he's on the Ray Bradbury Theater. Knock it off already. He is on the Ray Bradbury Theater. There must have been some leakage. Uh, satellite leakage? No, no, science fiction author leakage from one zone to another. It happens. Huh. Arthur C. Clarke may leak into Isaac Asimov. Or Ray Bradbury get mixed up with Jackie Collins. She doesn't do science fiction. Oh. I guess you couldn't get mixed up with her then. Well, just one drink, maybe. Oh, Can uh -huh. I get you something? Well, what, what do you got? Uh, Dandelion Wine Light? Perfect. What's that skull on your desk? Uh, that's a director who tried to have somebody rewrite my screenplay. Huh. He'll never try that again. No. Huh? What's that other skull? Uh, that's the writer who tried to do it. Boy, you really play hard skull. Well, you know, don't fool with daddy's work. As a writer, I can appreciate that. But also as a director, you know, I can see where another point of view might... Uh... What? Are you kidding? Without realizing it, Freeberg has just crossed over into... The touchy zone. Ray, I'm only kidding. Who is that guy who keeps butting in? You find him familiar? No, I find him annoying. Yeah, I think he's in the wrong series. By the way, I always wanted to write science fiction. Do you think I could? Well, let's see if you know some of the basic sci-fi terminology, okay? Shoot. Okay, time travel. Ah, uh, that's expense accounts of Time Magazine executives. Time travel. See? Similar to Newsweek travel. Uh, suspended animation. Saturday morning cartoon show that's been canceled. Uh, alien visitors. Bus boys without green cards. Cyborg. Uh, that's like Freeborg. Oh, boy. Uh, telekinesis. Television sets for both of your nieces. Extraterrestrials. Uh, that's like in a restaurant. If you want more terrestrials, you gotta tell the waiter extraterrestrials. Stan? Yeah? Don't give up your day job. <clears throat> okay. By the way, that's an interesting Ray Bradbury t-shirt you're wearing with all those 60s colors running together. Uh, what do you call that? Sci-fi tie-dye. And do you have a name for that Martian Chronicles mug you're holding with a rum drink in it? A sci-fi Mai Tai. I never would have done a cheap sci-fi joke like that on my show. There he is again. Who is that guy? How will Freeberg get out of this? I'll tell you how. Ray, you shot the whatchamacallit theme with your ray gun. I've wanted to do that for years. Besides, it's the only way to stop the leakage. It was breaking and entering the wrong sci-fi show. I'll accept that. <clears throat> Our thanks to America's premier science fiction author, Ray Bradbury. And in closing, Ray, what do you call... Yes? That long-legged Martian woman in the mini dress with the tall black patent leather boots preparing short-cooked Chinese vegetables. Thigh-high, stir-fry, sci-fi. I was afraid of that. Get out of here. Good night, Ray. <laughs> Good night, Stan. <laughs>